They said no way to having to pay. Tuesday was primary day in Big Mo, and an overwhelming 71 percent of voters rejected the part of the federal health care reform law that requires them to buy health insurance. They did so by voting for Proposition C, which states that, quote, no law or rule shall compel directly or indirectly any person, employer or health care provider to participate in any health care system, end quote. This obviously conflicts with our new federal law, which says that people who don't have health insurance will face penalties, including having their arms chopped off. A mm. kid, no, just their toes. Anyway, what does this all mean? Good question, Greg. Joining us now to help make sense of all of this is one of Prop C's sponsors, Missouri State Senator Jane Cunningham. Hello, Senator. Thanks for coming on. Are you surprised oh, by, by how, uh, how huge the margin was in victory? We thought if we got over 60 percent, it would be a miracle, so that it's over 70 percent is just overwhelming to all of us, both the opposition and those of us who supported it. Why do you think so many people voted for it? I think they really care deeply about Obamacare, and they don't want governor, government in their health care decisions. They want to preserve their right to make their own decisions, whether they buy whatever plan they like, keep a plan that they have, or buy no plan at all. So we're not just trying to promote that people buy no plan. We just want them to have the freedom of choice to decide what's best for them. Now, are you going to be ready for the media you know, to make Missouri out to, you know, to be the butt of a lot of jokes, which is what they did with Arizona? Because whenever you do something that's different than the administration, that's what happens. Well, we've already heard from our state senator uh, who was supportive of Obamacare, and she got the message and made that loud and clear. I don't think she sees it as a joke. Mm. Now, I've seen a lot of people saying that Prop C isn't going to hold up in court. What's your take on that? You know what? There are nine people that are going to make the, that decision, and they sit on the U.S. Supreme Court, and never have they been asked, mm -hmm. is it fair? Is it, is it right for the government to be able to force you, just because you live in this nation, to buy a product, any product with your own money against your will? That has never been done before, and the question has not been asked, and those Supreme Court justices will give us the answer. Well, that leads me to my, my last question, which is, it's, it's, it's interesting. The Obama administration is now arguing that the mandate is constitutional because it's a tax. This after telling people all throughout the debate that it wasn't a tax. No, it wasn't a tax. It wasn't a tax. I'm confused, as you can tell. Please help me. How can they say that now? I don't think they can. And I think the fact that the Virginia uh, case got upheld by the judge or he did not dismiss it shows that we have some real legal standing and we believe we can win this. We'll find out whether he thinks it's a tax and what will pass. But I think he's, he's just grasping for straws now and he never has cared what the public thinks. He thinks he's right. But 71 percent in the show me state felt otherwise. Yeah. Now, thanks, Sarah. I want you to just stick around because I want to talk to the panel about this. All experts in healthcare. Jim, you're actually the former dean of Yale Law School. Yes. Uh, can the states win this battle against the feds? I was fired false allegations <laughs> yes, to the students. <laughs> They're always false, aren't they, Jim? Uh, yeah, they really are. A bunch of liars. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my, my only question is, like, I, I have very mixed feelings about this. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want the government telling me I have to buy anything. But are people that are going to have no health care willing to say, okay, we don't want to pay into this, so we're not going to be covered at all. We're not going to burden people who do have it. Yeah. Like there's a really weird line there because by them saying we don't want to pay for it, I'm going to wind up getting screwed and paying for them if something happens to them. They're not going to go, just don't care for me if I'm sick. Yeah. No, so, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair point, which is why, Reshma, you play a uh, physician's assistant on the well game. Yes. You would have the answer for this question. Oh, yes. I actually <laughs> fully agree. I think that the line is very, very tricky. I, I think that we're in one of the richest countries in the world and everybody deserves to have health care. So there has except to be, for Bill. Except for Bill. And obviously yeah. he hasn't gotten it. Lately. Yes. Uh, but, <laughs> great, right here. Uh, but it's a really fine line. So, I mean, obviously people have spoken in Missouri, and, you know, you've got to take it from here. But, I mean, I don't know. They're saying that it's probably going to be repealed anyway by the Supreme Court. So I don't, you know, it's a very hard... It's a hard sticky question. wicket, as they yeah. say. Hey, Arthel, doesn't the whole health care reform law fall apart if it turns out they can't make people buy insurance? And you're talking about uh, the scenario that Jim just mentioned. Well, Jim has a good point. You don't want everybody on, on your dime, so to speak. Yeah. But maybe the focus should be on, on the monopoly that would appear to be a monopoly in the few number of companies out there mm -hmm. that that are issuing health care that's actually accepted, widely accepted by mm -hmm. medical providers. Mm -hmm.
an interesting mm. point, Bill. You know, you don't, you can't get health insurance mainly because of all your pre-existing conditions. <laughs> uh, so is this story fairly meaningless to you? It's meaningless to me, but I do have a question. Yeah. What's going on with the senator's backdrop? <laughs> is it just me? Is she finally from Missouri or the Emerald City? That's actually San Diego. San Diego. It is, <laughs> no, that is the Emerald City, and I think we're going to save money on the car service because she can just click her heels, <laughs> and she is out of there. That is the greenest thing I've ever seen. It's actually But I love gorgeous. it. All right. uh, I will say this. The one thing that confuses me about the health care <laughs> plan. Thanks for getting to the answer. I am getting to the get answer. Get there. Get there. Um, but uh, the one thing that confuses me is the fine is less than paying for it. I mean, the fine is less yeah, than, than paying for it. So, like, if you don't have health care and you're going to have to pay for this or it's a tax, uh, not paying for it costs a little less than actually doing it. So what's to stop someone who doesn't want to pay for the health care, get run over by a bus, then jump into it, and then the whole thing just implodes? I've never gotten that part. I just wanted to ask anyone that doesn't want to pay into it and mm -hmm. says, I don't want to, I don't want insurance, will we? Will they be covered if they're hurt by something? Yeah, or can we as a society go, you know what, they found a lump on your forehead, too bad. That's, I mean, that's kind of how it is now, that people go to the emergency room. I want to uh, uh, move on, but before, uh, uh, Senator Cunningham, do you, uh, any final thoughts to any of these issues raised by our extremely thoughtful group of uh, miscreants? <laughs> well, the last comment was the best one, and he got it. If you pay, you economical plan by not buying insurance, paying the fine, and then buying it when you need it, knowing that pre-existing conditions cannot be considered by the carrier. The other thing is we need look no further than the state of Massachusetts, who has already tried this individual mandate. Their premiums went up 40 percent, and still the emergency rooms were filled with the same number, if not more, people. So it's not going to accomplish what they say their goal is. Well, it looks like this scarecrow had a brain the whole time, <laughs> no, Greg. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, and, Bill, you're going to uh, sit the rest of the show out. I like rainbows, In your too. private room. All right. <laughs> to the Gregalog. It's an Apple Pie.